After many weeks of planning and preparation, it's finally here. Brew day on my new 10 gallon system. You wanna see how it works out for me? Keep watching. Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is the culmination, this video and this brew day of months or say several weeks at least worth of planning and preparation to upgrade my five gallon brew house into a 10 gallon brew house. Now I've done a number of DIY videos out there on this topic uh, in a playlist. If you've not seen this yet, it's a five to 10 gallon brewery upgrade project playlist. I'll put the link down below, go check that out. I do some DIYs for mash tons, immersion chillers, and a hot liquor tank. I even talk about my new 20 gallon custom kettle by Spike Brewing, which is just below uh, the table here, just below the camera, off camera. Don't worry, I'll show that to you as well. But this system is the system that I chose to brew on and, and make for my own preferences. Everyone's got their own personal preferences, right? Some of you more advanced brewers have really fancy rigs. I've seen them out there. Uh, it, you know, it just makes me drool looking at them. But truth is, I, I think I said in, in a past video, I'm more of a closet brewer, meaning I got to put everything away back basically back into a closet when I'm done. I don't have permanent space for brewing. So I had to design my, 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 my larger brewery with storage in mind. Right, so keep, so keep that in mind. I've only got one burner and I bought a chugger pump. So I got one pump, one burner to work with here, folks. And I know a lot, a lot of you folks have multiple burners and multiple pumps and permanent systems, which really are cool. They are, but it's not for me. I don't have the space for it. So please, uh, for those advanced brewers who see what my primitive system is like, please forgive me for those newbies who are le learning uh, how to brew for the first time. Uh, you and I got something in common here. We're, we're gonna walk through this this, uh, this first usage of this new system in a real brew day today. I'm making a, a, an American Amber Ale, a recipe I just sort of made up out of thin air. I've never made a recipe before. I don't really care. Uh, I'm not doing the video for the recipe and to share that with you. I'm, I'm, I'm here to share the actual brewing setup and how I use it. Uh, so if you have questions about the, the Amber recipe, I can answer them, but it's not the focus of this video. So without further ado, let's move on and let's get going. What you're looking at here is my brew house design, uh, conceptually shown, showing all the steps along the way. So uh, as I designed the equipment and, and components here that you wouldn't, uh, that I wouldn't forget something along the way, some, some important step, because you know, I've got years of doing my brew the same way over and over again. And this is a very completely new way of, of brewing for me at least. So I got step by step showing from vessel to vessel, uh, with a pump in the middle and which fit, fit fittings and, and, and parts are required. So yeah, I am an engineer folks by by education and experience. So it, it's showing here, I know, right? But this is what I did to help me figure out and walk through the process in my mind to make sure I didn't forget anything today. What you're looking at here is the centerpiece of my new 10 gallon system, folks. It's my 20 gallon custom kettle by Spike Brewing. Now I've done a video on this, so I won't go into the details here on it, but if you want to see more about it, go check out that video. I'll put the link down below. But what I have here is one kettle and one burner, folks. I don't have the luxury of two or three burner systems like a lot of you do out there. So everything I'm doing today is uh, pr premised upon the fact I got one burner and one kettle to heat all my water from the hot liquor tank water to the mash water, to sparge, strike water, uh, wash up water all the water i need is going to be heated in here and dispersed out of here through a pump i have and this is the pump uh, it's a chugger pump it's the old one i have for for pumping uh fluids around the system so I, I know a lot of you guys have more than one well i just upgraded from zero to one so it's the only one i'm using so i have to reuse this pump for every step along the way here so uh I, so i fitted not just the pump but uh, the kettle and everything else up here with quick disconnect fittings there's a female uh, one here um, and a male one here i've got a valve on here to, to control the, fl the flow right out of the pump i use silicone silicone hosing for for the hot liquid transfers and i have a foot pedal switch to turn this thing on and off with 
as I go. So it frees up my hands to hold things and my foot can control the pump as it goes. And on the hoses, I got the quick disconnects here. Uh, these are called cam lock quick disconnects. And so basically you have a male on one end of the hose and a female on the other. So the input is the female, the output is always the male on everything in my system. The males were always the output. Females always input, all right? And so they go together you know, just like this and there's these clamps that you clamp it on like that and it holds it on really good, right? So I use these everywhere and it makes the rest of my day hopefully somewhat easier. We'll see. The first step after upgrading all your equipment and before brewing is of course to come up with a recipe. So using my, my uh, brewing recipe template, uh, it's really easy to scale up a recipe. If you have an existing five gallon batch recipe, right, you'll, you'll have outputs down here about your, about your IBUs, your alcohol by volume, attenuation, your expected uh, starting gravities and final gravities, right? These are your outputs from your five gallon recipe. So if you're doing a 10 gallon version, you can scale up the ingredients, scale up the hops, right? and uh, double check and verify that the values before you scaled up are, uh, for your outputs are the same afterwards. And that's what I did here. Since I doubled my recipe, I, as you can see, I had to get a, sec a second bucket for my grains. So everything is now supersized in this new system. I have something that just takes a little more getting used to. That's all. I had to double the size of my yeast otter too. Look at that, almost 2,000 milliliters this time. All right, folks, I need about eight gallons for my strike water. I want to just let it fill up a bit more, though, just, just in case I, I need it. All right, that's good enough. So let's get this thing heated up. I'm about ready to add my strike water to my mash tun. So this is my mash tun. If you've not seen this yet, go check out my mash tun DIY video in the playlist in the link down below. But uh, what I'm going to do here is start pumping and, and recirculating the water in the kettle that's heating up right now through here and back to the kettle again to preheat the inside of this cooler like I had done on my old cooler that, that I had to do manually with, uh, with hot water from the stove in the house and I had to pour it in there and stroll it around. Well, I no longer have to do that. That, that, that pain in the butt part of that task is now gone. I am going to use the pump to my advantage, recirculate the water in here, get it up to the proper mash temperature and we'll be back. All right, here we go, the first use of the pump. Open up the valves. There we go, got some of the hot water flowing in now to prime the pump. The pump is below the level of the water, so it should prime itself, um, hopefully. We'll see. There it goes, it's gotta give it a little bit of a shake. Get it going. All right, open up this valve. And I have a foot pedal. So let's see how this goes, huh folks? Cross your fingers. Oop. We've got a little bit of air in there still. Let's try that again. There it goes, success. So while it's filling up, how I'll know how many uh, quarts I put in is via this homemade measuring stick that, that I've made already. It's got uh, gallons and quarts written on here, all the way from, from one gallon down here to nine gallons up here with uh, quart increment marks. So for this brew I'm making, I think I need about seven and a half gallons. So I'm going to measure this just like a dipstick like I did in my old system until it gets up to that right level and then, then I'll turn the pump off. All right, it's right at seven gallons. About another half a gallon more. And there we are, folks, just a tad over seven gallons, just like my spreadsheet says to do. Beautiful. My stark water is now at its temperature. I think it's 164-ish degrees. I'm going to go ahead now and add my grains in. That's one. There we go, two. So let's stir that in. 
153, 154. Okay, a couple degrees off, but uh, oh well, I'll take it. Let's go ahead and close it up and let it mash. All right, folks, now that the mash is going on for the next hour, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill up some more water here to heat up for my hot liquor tank. All right, that's 11 gallons. That's more than the 10 gallon capacity of my hot liquor tank. So that's plenty of water there. So let's heat that up. Now it's time to fill up my hot liquor tank. I got the uh, over or the uh, filler hose, I call it, from the mash tun I was just using. I moved it over here, kind of se secured it onto the side handle so it doesn't go fl flopping out, All right? I'm gonna dump that in there. I'm gonna turn on the water. Uh, it's, it's gonna pump fr from my kettle that's heating up that 10 extra gallons of water right now into here, fill this thing up. And uh, I might even recirculate it from here back to the kettle uh, just, to, just, just to make sure it's preheated around uh, to about 175 degrees is my guess. Thank you, sir. And then this is going to go hook up down here. So I got both valves open on the, on the kettle there for the recirculation. Now I'm going to ask my brother Chad off camera to go step on the pedal over there. And there we go. More water, folks. There we go. Filling right up to the top, folks. We'll be back. So now I got it coming out of here. So now, now it's completely recirculating and uh, heating up my uh, hot liquor tank as well as filling it at the same time. All right, folks, I got it filled up to just shy of 10 gallons here. Um, I ran out of suction on my hose because I didn't put enough water in the kettle. So that's all right. A little shy. I'll just have to make up for it on, at, a, at a later step. So let's go ahead and keep this nice and hot for a while until our mash is done and we're ready to sparge. Now that all the water has been transferred from here to the hot liquor tank, uh, it's still got some dead space, some, uh, some, some, uh, some hot water still here in the bottom. I'm going to have to drain out of here before I can refill this with the uh, wort after the mash is done. Hey everyone, look who's back. My brother Chad. Hello. Hey. Uh, we're going to do, uh, he, he's going to help me with this 10 gallon system today because who knows what kind of problems I might have. I might need a, an extra set of hands and I already have already apparently set this stuff up. So uh, I'm actually glad he's here because there's something new like this while trying to shoot a video and uh, work out the kinks is quite overwhelming for one person to handle. So thank you very much for coming. Not a problem. All right. Um, so anyway, we're going to uh, move on. We got the mash about done. We got the hot water in the hot liquor tank here, ready to start sparging. I'm gonna put some water from here into here to top it up, stir it up, boil off it via the recirculation method now, uh, using the pump off, off camera here. And then we're gonna get this draining under the kettle. So uh, let, let's get on to the next, uh, next step, huh? Yeah, let's get yeah. on it. All right. All right, folks, it's been an hour for the mash. And uh, oh boy, oh man, I smelled that just after opening the lid right away. All right, so this is, so this is a lot of mash, folks. Twice as much as I normally do, of course, being a 10-gallon batch versus my unusual fives. But uh, boy, I, oh man! Here, let me smell this off camera here. Hey, Chet's here. Here, smell that one. Oh my goodness! Oh man! All right, folks. Well, all right. Uh, I'm going to boil off this now, uh, but not the, my old method where I would use this, uh, a, a, a pitcher of water and hot water and dump it in. I'm going to take advantage of my hoses and pumps to, to recirculate this for me and clarify the wort. All right, so you're going to fish that in there. All right, so let's go ahead and rest the hose on there like that. Good. Now I'm going to go ahead and add, according to my sheet, I think it's like 11 quarts. It's about two and three quarters gallons. All right, so folks, I have a I have two ways I can do this. I need to measure my two and three quarters gallons or my 11 quarts on my recipe with my measuring stick here, possibly. But no, nope, I sunk over my top mark here. So what I'm gonna to have to do now is rely on the tick marks on the hot liquor tank wall showing the gallon markings to show how much I added. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go monitor that off camera here and while this thing fills up. All right, so, all right, so, all right, so Chad, go ahead and give it a kick. Oh, why don't you turn down the, uh, the uh, valve about halfway down there. Maybe a bit more. There we go. Nice trickle, just like that, see? Just, just so it trickles out like that, right? 
and I'm measuring the flow rate here or the drop in volume off camera folks on the hot liquor tank it's at the 10 gallon mark that's why I fill it up to so I've got to get it down to about two and three quarter gallon drop so from 10 gallons all of it went down to like seven and uh, seven and a quarter yeah thanks all right Chad go ahead and flip it off all right folks uh, I'm about ready to overflow my mash tun here as you can see I had to stop the flow at about a gallon and a half and I needed two and three quarters gallons so uh, I, I gotta re, re, recalculate my, my brewing spreadsheet for the losses or the capacity limitations here I may have misjudged some of this uh, prior to setting this up no problem I know better for next time it's one of the lessons I'm learning here today so I'm going to have to add the extra water on the next step or, or the step after possibly even okay so now I'm going to go ahead and stir this in real carefully because it's right at the very top here of spilling now I'm just going to let this sit for a few minutes and settle all right take this hose off of here okay folks and then I'm going to go put this on the front of the mash tun like that and I have the the output valve on the pump turned way down because I want to vol off a very slow rate not too fast there we go so I'm gonna just let's sit barely on top not even inside just barely above the water line just like that just make sure it, it, it doesn't come flying out when I turn on the pump all right you ready here I open up all the valves so I'll open up the valve the mash ton and it's gonna it's all ready to go let's press the pedal and see what happens huh All right, so we can see here the flow rate's a little trickle, just like that. And it's pumping very clear wort, or that's just water, it looks like. Yeah, there's still water in the hose, that's right. All right, so the, there it goes, so now it's changed color, see, right there. All right, so let's go ahead and let that whirl off for a bit. All right, so lesson learned here, uh, don't, don't leave the hose on unmonitored that hose just about flopped out of here and spraying uh, <laughs> uh, fresh wort everywhere so thanks to Chad he caught it and put it back in just in time there all right so I, I'm going to stop this now and uh, I think actually it probably just let it sit off the side there yeah yeah I think it's probably just off the side's fine all right and now let's go ahead and drain this to the kettle all right folks it's time to go to the kettle now so I'm going to take my 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 hose come across the camera don't mind me getting in the way and I'm gonna dock this into the female quickly. yeah real quickly because see it's probably to overflow here just like that so I'll shove you in there like that and there we go so now I got a flow from here into the pump from the pump back into here and I'm gonna drain it with some pumping action here so let's get her done huh Oh, see, Chad found a problem. Thank you, sir. There it goes. First drain step underway. All right, I gotta uh, speed up the, the transfer just by opening the valve some more, just like that. There we go. All right, I'm gonna turn that off and do the second sparge. All right, so, so this is closed. This is the input, so I'm gonna take this off of the output here, move back over here, and put it on the input of my hot liquor tank. Now, now got a pretzel going. And that's okay, I don't mind that so much. And now I'm gonna take the output from down here, put it back on top of here. So I have to close this valve. It's not that hot. I can separate this really quick before it spills too much. Bring it up and back through. Chad, you want to walk around the back and give me a hand there? Thank you. And we'll leave it through the, yeah, there you go. All right, so I turn this on now. Open this up so it, so it, it, it lets some air in, so it breathes. Uh, it's all flowing. I got the pump on okay over there. So it'll be, now, now remember, I need to measure volume that I added here. So what I want to do here, 
Let's take a little look here on the marker here. I got about, I got about eight and almost three quarters of a gallon, almost eight and a half gallons even maybe possibly. So I'm going to drop down. I'm going to add another 29 quarts. It's about another seven and a half gallons, I think it is, according to the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's add our seven and a half gallons. And so I'm going to make that measurement there, and we're going to drop it all the way down and fill this thing up. So Chad, you want to do the honors? Um, here, hold on a minute. Let me stand back here and make sure this hose doesn't go flying out when you do it. So go ahead and hit it. All right, there we go, folks. You might want to turn the valve down a little bit so it's not such a jet. There you go. That's good. Perfect. Thank you. So, uh, you know, I, I just want to spray in hot water all over the place. That's all. You want to stir up the... Well, I'll have to stir it back up again here anyway oh. to, to get the sugar. Because I'm, I'm doing batch sparging again, folks, for those of you who know about this, right? There's fly sparging where I can let this sort of just drizzle on top. As long as I match the, the uh, flow rate exiting and the flow rate in, I'm good to go. I've, I, as you know, I'm a fan of the batch sparge, so I'll go ahead and do the batch sparging this time around again. Uh, which means filling this up, stirring it all back in, vorloffing it, and draining it a second time. All right, folks, I filled this up again. So let's go ahead and stir it up and uh, let it sit before we vorloff it and then drain it. All right, let's let it sit for a few minutes. All right, folks, time to vorloff again. Let's go ahead and open the valve, have things going in. Back to the top, back at the top of here. Foot pedal right off the corner of the screen here. Go. And that flow rate's a little bit fast for my liking, so I'm gonna go ahead and reach down and lower it a little bit. There we go, that's about what I like there. All right, folks, I'm doing my second drain step here. I got it recirculating from the outlet of the mash tun down to the pump, up to the hoses back on top again and a small trickle, just like, just like I would if I was doing my own bore off with a, with a uh, pitcher or a measuring cup, like I was doing in my old videos. So we're gonna let this recirculate until the work runs clear, which is starting to already, but I'll give it a couple more minutes. All right, let's, let's give a little check here. It's looking pretty clear to me. There's no chunks and husks or anything. It's not really that cloudy. Or not cloudy at all, actually. I think that looks good. All right. I'm go ahead and turn this off and get draining again, huh? All right, folks, time for the next draining step. Open up the valves. This one needs to be open. That one's already now open. That one's mostly open. Everything's ready to go. Let's go ahead and drain it to the kettle, folks. There it goes. It's dropping. Watch it spin. All right, folks, so I have some, uh, some uh, readjusting to do for my brew house setup because I already know I'm down several quarts on my mash tun. Apparently, I'm, I must have something wrong with how I measured my, my mash tun capacity because it did not hold as much as I thought it did. And as a result, after two draining steps, I've only got a tad under 13 gallons and I need 14 and a half. So now I want to put some more hot water back in here and do another uh, third, third step, unfortunately. Hey Chad, how's it going there? Oh, it's going. It's, it's pretty good. Just topping off the water here and doing on a third, third run. So, so the problem is, let's see, go around this way. So, so the, so the problem was again, I, uh, for some reason I got to figure out how and where, but I misjudged the, either the, the dead space somewhere or the quantity of uh, the capacity of my mash tun, something along the way where I still had about two gallons of, of hot liquor tank water still needing to go in here and this thing had been filled up for both the first and second drain so I have to go back and re revisit that later but no problem I still had the hot water still in the hot liquor tank so we did a third step here we're stirring it in we're letting it sit now again we're going to vorloff off it like the first two steps etc 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 not a problem uh, it's still going to be beer I just no problem just got to figure out what went wrong later all right so okay so folks well, uh, I, I want to pour the contents of the hoses into the kettle as well. So I moved the, the height of the pump higher so we don't splash work everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and want you to lower that down to more like this level here, right? There we go, right? So that one's, all right, so there we go. So now we can just sort of dump this into the kettle. 
All right. Whoop. All right. You gonna hold that for a minute? Actually, we we'll could probably put it down here and actually coil it up. All right. Now this next one. This is done and ready to pull that one off. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Ready to go. Nope. Yeah. Oh, yep, there we go. Let's dump that one in there. There we go. And let's let those boil. And let's clean up a little bit here while it gets to a boil and we'll, be, and we'll come back. All right, folks, we're at a good rolling boil here. Got another hour of boiling before I add all my hops towards the last 15 minutes of the boil here. So we got about an hour to kill. All right, folks, like I said, an hour to burn. So what should we do? Drink beer. Drink beer. Hey, what do you know? Let's go. Well, we're back. Cheers. Oh, man, this is that brown ale that uh, Chad and I brewed about a month or almost two months ago, maybe now. Has it been that long? Well, by the time this video comes out, it, it, it will have been, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. So, uh, so still, that was my phone, by the way. Ignore that. So, what do you think? Uh, I think it's good. It's, it might have changed a little bit, but from when we first tried it. It's, it's mellowed. Like, uh, it's more melded, I guess. It's harder to distinguish the different malts and flavors. It's, it's actually more like I thought it would have been now mm -hmm. than when it was when we first tried it. Yeah, it's interesting. Like the fresh beers, you know, right, right out of the tap, uh, five days after you uh, carbonate them, uh, taste to me different than they do a month and a half later. It's just how it is. And not that it's bad or good. It's just, uh, it just changes a little bit. I think we just got to drink more beer faster. Yeah, drink it faster. Or, or, or if you like it the way it tastes now, then wait longer. Yeah. Patience, right? Patience. It'll get better. Yep. All right. Mm. All right. Well, we still got 45 minutes to kill, so we got more beer to drink. We got a lot of time to kill b before we add our next hops edition. So we might have to go through a couple of these, probably, huh? Yeah. So All right. That's like a plan to me. Salute. All right, folks, we're at the 15 minute mark. It's time to throw in another hops edition for my recipe, as well as, well, one to two Rolf Lock tablets. Boom, boom. And my new. Do it yourself immersion chiller. That's going in there to sanitize. All right. And my goal here is to spin this counterclockwise because my whirlpooling pulling will be done clockwise. So this will sort of be like a counter flow uh, chilling method with immersion chiller, basically, with, with the flow going, the whirlpool going this way and the chilling water going the other way. All right, let's recirculate it too. All right, folks, time to flame out here. Turn off the, uh, the gas and let's start chilling, guys. So uh, pump's turned off. This thing's going here right now. Uh, I'm gonna start, uh, start the tubing. So what I got here is my old chiller put in here as a pre-chiller for now with my garden hose attached to it. And from here, it's, it's gonna get a pre-chill, go in through my Immersion chiller clockwise while my whirlpool goes counterclockwise. It's going to come out of this little tube here, and the first several gallons are going to of hot water that come out are going to fill up my uh, hot liquor tank here for washing and cleaning uh, the, the lines and the equipment later. Once it cools down enough, I'm going to rearrange this to a recirculation uh, method like I, like I normally do, and I'll do all that in line here. So let's get let's get moving here. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up, uh, keep it recirculating, turn on that water supply, be right back. And there it goes, you probably, oh, it's off camera here guys, it's behind the, the wall of the kettle here, but it is now filling up with really hot water in here. So again, just to reiterate, in case I didn't make it clear before, I got my garden hose coming in through my old work chiller chilling things down in some ice water here. That cold water is going into this new immersion chiller, which is running in a counterclockwise direction. Meanwhile, I'm recirculating the work going in a clockwise direction against that flow of cooling. And the first several gallons are coming out into this hot liquor tank. And the reason why I'm doing it this way, folks, is partially because 
the flow rate, the water pressure I have from my garden hose is far greater than any of the pressure that's been exerted by my old submersible pump or my new one. I had bought a new submersible pump for this occasion because I wanted a, one that was double the, the uh, flow rate. Apparently, uh, there's a limit here because the testing I have done um, in this new system with the old uh, submersible pump was only about 0.6 gallons per minute. The new pump is only about 0.7 gallons per minute. So I am hitting up against a bottleneck here with the ability of these submersible pumps to pump that much liquid through that length of a coil, uh, not to mention the, the combined sum of these two put together. So I'm using my garden hose as the initial cooling source because it's got a much higher flow rate and it'll get this thing chilled down to probably 100 and some low in the 100 degrees area much quicker than if I just recirculated it. Uh, and then I'll go to transition over to the recirculation method once I get below about 100 degrees, I think. All right, so I filled this thing up with pretty warm to hot water. I'm gonna cap that for now and use that later. This I no longer need. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I turned off my water supply to the hose already. So I'm gonna take this off. Now it's time for the submersible pump. And out goes the, the discharge hose in favor of the recirculation hose. All right, so that end goes in there. This thing goes up here. Okay, that's on, that's on. This is in the water over here. I actually don't even need this, need this anymore. This would come out. Now I'm ready to recirculate. Okay, well, I, so I have the whirlpool going clockwise, just like I said, from the recirculating pump down below, from the, from the ch chugger pump. Now I got the submersible fountain pump recirculating cold water through this coil the other direction going counterclockwise and back into the cooler. All right, folks, my plan of using large jugs of ice water in here did not work. This water is room temperature, even when these things are full of ice. Apparently that was not a good option for chilling, uh, obviously because there's less surface area to keep the water cold. I mean, there's ice still in here. It's just not melting. So uh, this, from my own knowledge and your, your reference too, uh, actual ice cubes work a lot better because they have a heck of a lot more surface area. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my pump here and I'm going to put my garden hose back up to it because the water from the garden hose is definitely colder than the water in this cooler. Okay. And then this is going to be changed too. I'm screw this on here again, folks, just like I did originally. Listen and learn, folks. Um, if I would have stuck with three bags of ice cubes like, like, like I've done before, this probably would have worked fine, but I was trying to do too many new things at once. And apparently the large jugs of ice cubes is a very, very, very bad idea. All right, that's better, folks. So now it's chilling again. Back on course. Yep, ice, ice and cold again. Uh, so just let that be a lesson to me and maybe to some of you out there. It's chilled, chilled down to below 80 degrees. I think the, the gauge on the pot says 78 degrees. That's plenty enough for me for today. And right next to the, my spike brewing kettle is the spike brewing CF10 conical fermenter. Uh, they uh, loaned me to, to do this video and to make my opinion video of it later. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and now we're going to rack and transfer and pump from here using the hoses and tubing into here. First, I got to remove my immersion chiller out of here because I want to take a final volume measurement using the guides on the wall of the kettle as my guide. So having this in here throws off the volume measurement. So I want to get this out of there first. And the volume measurement to me looks like it's about 12 and a half gallons exactly there. So a 12 and a half gallons, folks. I know I've already sprayed this down a couple times because this is this hose in here is, is going to be inserted a little ways into the top of the fermenter. So I want to make sure it's sanitized, which I've done it a couple times now. So I'm pretty confident that it is. Okay. Oh. All right. Now this thing's got to go on top of here. However, I got to move my pump a little closer so I can reach it. And this can fit right inside there. It doesn't have to go too far just enough so it doesn't splash and fall out. 
like that, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pump again by bringing the, the, the pedal closer to me. And I'm going to hit go. Just like that. So right now it's draining out of the kettle over here and all in the here and it's splashing and aerating which is exactly what I want it to do. I, I actually want it to splash. See the hose there? It's coming out really fast. I want it to splash. I want it to aerate on its own. I'm going to go ahead and oxygen it anyway just to be sure but this is definitely, this is definitely helping me out with that. Oh yeah, I see Troub folks. It's in the center of the pot, just like I had hoped. This is looking pretty good for me, guys. There it goes, guys. It's reaching the bottom of the pot. And there it goes. There it goes. Sorry about the mess, but um, it was starting to pull up some trube after all. Okay, it's all wiped up. Now, it's hard to see in there because of this foam though. So I'm gonna let it settle for a little bit and I'm gonna come back and check the volume level in just a moment. All right, folks, as you can see, the warp pulling did have some effect. Much of the troop did collect it in the center after all. And my pickup tube down here um, did start to pick up some troop that was still loading around the edges. So I had to stop the flow. So there's still more liquid in here than I originally planned on leaving behind. Now in the future, I could actually tilt this little pickup tube up a little higher and avoid that probably some more at the cost of some lost trouble or some lost word along the way. But uh, I'll decide upon that later. All right, just for good measure folks, I'm gonna oxygen it anyway. So let's go ahead and fill her up. All right, folks, that's a few minutes of oxygen as well as the aeration from splashing in there. That should be plenty enough. Another advantage with the 4-inch opening over the smaller one is that it's easier, a lot easier to pour in your, uh, your, your yeast or your yeast starter. So that's awesome. All right. All right, I'm going to put this back on with the uh, silicone seal still there. Put that down on there like that. We're going to put the tri-clamp fitting on here. So... Put that on there like that. Screw it down. Like that. Well, there we go with the fermenters between 70 and 80 degrees. Hopefully it will drop a little bit lower than that. I'm going to put this thing aside in the garage and let it ferment. All right, folks, it's time to clean. I got my orange hot liquor tank uh, filled out with some uh, PBW mixed in with the hot water that I collected earlier. And I'm going to run and clean out my hoses. So it's going to go from the hot liquor tank through the pump, the pump head, through the other hose into the kettle, rinse around there, and then come out the uh, kettle uh, exit and then back on top in the kettle again. So it's going to go wash all through here and all end up in the kettle and I'm going to scrub that thing clean. So let's get started. All right, folks, the brew day is over. Uh, Chad was a huge help today, right? Yeah, I, I'm glad to be here to give you a hand. Yeah, a little bit more complications than I thought I would, uh, you know, with the hoses and keeping a, the cavitation of the pump at bay. Uh, adding a, bl a bleeder valve to that line would probably would have been a, a good move in hindsight, but there is a workaround. It's just a matter of moving hoses around to work out the air bubbles. Adds more frustration, but it worked ultimately, right? Yeah. Yep. And also needed his hand with uh, reminding me to open or close certain valves along the way. As many valves as there were around here and hoses, it was really easy to get confused, at least for my first time doing this, uh, until I could become accustomed to it, as to what, which valve to open and when to close. Even if you think you know, you all of a sudden you look, you look down and say, oh, I thought I opened that, and you have to open it really quick. So that's one of the things that I've, I've learned today. But Overall, it was a, it was an interesting experience. Um, it did add a little time to our uh, brew day from when I was doing five gallons, but I would probably say a lot of that goes to the time it took to set up the camera and film all these shots in this video. That, that added a lot of time. Mm, I agree. I agree. So anyway, uh, that's it, Chad. What do you think? I mean, it, it, I think we hope we'll have a good beer. We actually had a a little taste test in our hydrometer sample. Yeah. Uh, that's the color. It's not quite amber. 
<laughs> and I drank all that, yep. But uh, hey, you know, yeah, but, but it was quite delicious. I think I have a good combination of hops and grains in this one. So anyway, thanks for coming, Chad. And uh, me. I'll have you over or I'll bring some beers over when the beer's done in a few weeks and Looking we'll have a beer. Yeah, all right, yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Thanks, Larry. Yep, ciao. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.